Hey there! I see all these shadows going on. I'm trying to add more light to the table and less, um, less complaints about the lighting. So anyway, I hope, I hope this is helping. I don't know. I'm going to end up tripping on something. <laughs> Um, my table is a big fat mess, but I just wanted to show you, you can, you can drip all over butcher paper and it's really awesome because you can peel it up if it gets thick enough. If it's kind of thin and you, can, you, know, you can't really, you can scrape it off with your fingernail, but it takes way too long. But the really thick stuff like this piece I had started to peel up right here and I wanted to finish it. So this was one whole big like drip off area from probably a couple of paintings. So you see that pretty much came up in one piece and it's all kinds of drips and designs. There's uh, turquoises and you know, from different there's some metallic on the end there's just all kinds of stuff and the only way you can really keep it and not have it stick to something else is to stick it on some freezer paper and kind of layer it up these were from my patent leather pours the other day and see if, if you put them on top of each other they will stick. Fortunately it didn't stick in a good area but yeah you can't let it fold over on itself or anything so you have to lay it flat on parchment paper or some kind of paper that's not going to stick. So there's that's from my patent leather pour the other day. And like here's, here's a really cool piece that I did. I actually just swiped right on my table. This was black with some greens and yellows. And here's some colorful drips that I had peeled up earlier. Right there. Here's another little section that had some, a, pretty, a pretty little design right, right on the end there. And this was, you know, kind of so-so, but when you get cabochons on top of this, it, um, it does help it, kind of like gloss varnish does on top of a dried painting. If you put glass over this to make jewelry with, it does kind of bring it back to life a little bit. So like here's a piece or two. Some of it doesn't look so exciting, but like I said, when you get the glass on top of it, sometimes it looks way better than it does when it's dried and a little bit on the matte looking side. So this is what I do is I just, here's another, well that's the end of a piece right there. So I layer it between papers. And then that way it does not stick to each other. So I'm going to do a black painting today. I had done this one, which I have not cleaned and sealed yet, but um, I loved the way the contrast of this against the black almost gives it kind of like a stained glass effect. I really liked the yellow and white edges against the black and with these colors and I thought you know I'm gonna do another one. I had one that was called Bloom Where You Are and it had little uh, reddish blooms that were kind of coming from stalks and then I did this one after that one and so this had some name of tulip in my video. I can't remember which one. I'm gonna do something like th this one today and I'm going to switch it around and do the purple as the main color of the flower with some red, orange, and yellow accents. And, but I loved the way this kind of turned out, almost stained glass looking. And then the, the leaves are very cell swipe looking. And this is all done. 
It's on, this will be on an 18 by 24. This is a dry, pre-primed black canvas from Michaels. You can get them from different places. But I'm going to, uh, everything is mixed one to one with Oetrol Easy Flow. And it's a water-based, latex-based conditioner. So that means you put it into acrylic paint or latex paint like if it's the paint that you put on walls, but you cannot put it in oil-based paint. And this is water-based conditioner or extender. It is a company out of Europe, and they have a location in Miami. You can order it from Oetrol from the website or from Amazon, and it is in my Amazon recommendation links below all of my videos. I may be using my pool trowel, which is also in my Amazon link. And if I do, I'll use it to spread the black on my canvas. So I've got lamp black deco art, and I always keep a big container of black and white mixed up because they are most often used. So um, I've got the big container of black that I'm going to put on the canvas. I, the, the colors in my squeeze bottles over here are titanium white, primary yellow, Orange Flame, Santa Red, Dioxazine Purple, the lighter purple is Purple Rain, this is Lamp Black, uh, Festive Green, Sour Apple, Bright Blue, and then my what I call my Peacock color is their Peacock Teal with evergreen and ultra blue mixed in to deepen it up. So those are my colors. I forgot I'm going to throw in maybe some uh, carousel pink and maybe the primary magenta. And what I do is I take all my tops from my squeeze bottles and put them in a little cup and that way you don't have any trouble finding your lid. All my colors are mixed one to one with the uh, the Easy Flow from Oetrol and then I use spot on treadmill lubricant in my squeeze bottles. But what I do is I mix it in a cup and I do one to one ratio and then with Deco Art you really don't need to add water except for the primary magenta which is in the tube. Only the primary magenta needs a little extra water. And then however many ounces you have mixed up, so if you have four ounces of paint in a cup, then you put four drops of silicone into your mixture. Stir it in and then pour it into your bottle. So you pour it into the bottle at the last. And then once you have it in your bottle, you shake it and you can shake it all you want to. You can leave it in your bottle as long as you want to indefinitely. And as I use it up, then I add more paint to it, the paint mixture. So I always mix in a cup so you can see exactly what the consistency is first. And then you put it into your bottle after you've seen the, the consistency. So spot on treadmill lubricant. Put my gloves on here. I'm gonna move my, my colors over here to the right. And then I'm also, I'll have a skewer that I like to use to move paint around a little bit. Keep it, I keep a toothpick around in case any of the bottles are stopped up at the top, which does happen. So I pretty much have my skewer, my straw around always, and then these are my little plastic scrapers that I've had forever. I need to get new ones but because um, the paint, if you don't rinse it thoroughly, or sometimes I've even gotten varnish and resin and other stuff on it, then you know, it builds up over time and they're only a couple of bucks for a three pack and so I keep these around. So here's my black canvas and I'm going to start by putting a layer down of wet paint which is 50-50 with Oetrol. always have paper towels around too whenever you're swiping to wipe your tools off anytime you swipe. And with all these lights around, this may this will help 
it's going to help promote the drying of this background pretty quickly. This style of painting uh, dries very quickly. It's not super thick except for right on top of the flowers, but it's still usually dry within 24 hours. It just doesn't take super long to dry because you're using very little paint as far as you're not uh, pouring off excess on the sides and that kind of thing. So you get to utilize your paint pretty efficiently. So just trying to make sure there's a nice smooth. I'm going to put just a little bit more because of the lights. I do want um, to make sure that I've got enough paint so that it doesn't dry on me too fast. But you could probably still do this technique even with a dry canvas. I just like to use the wet canvas. It just helps the paint glide around a little bit better. So I'm just making sure all my edges are covered and that way when it dries everything is consistent from the sides to the top so that you don't have the black from the pre-primed canvas that is different looking from the black that you put on top. So I see some stuff in my paint here. So I'm just kind of re-scraping the surface of this just a little bit. I'm going to put this lid back on, make sure that's sealed up, no air in it. Put it aside. Any excess black paint, you know, you can just use for your fingers to make sure it's on there okay on the sides and everywhere. Also, do not <clears throat> put any silicone in the black or white. Those are the two colors that I traditionally just leave the silicone out of. If I want to do a swipe and I want to swipe with something different from black or white, then I sometimes will not put silicone in that color. But I have been known to do swipes where I used a purple to swipe with or a green or whatever that were in my squeeze bottles and it still produces lovely cells. So I'm going to do kind of the same tulip kind of effect and I think I will start with the festive green and do my stalks and I kind of like, I like to do threes and fives that kind of thing so I'll do probably five like I did on the other one. And you know, it doesn't, they're not supposed to be similar looking. They just, I want them to look like they could go together though. So then I'm going to do the darker peacock color. Kind of on one side of the stem as if it were like a shadow. And also keep in mind like if they were going to be crossing over each other, keep that in mind too when you're thinking about, you know, even though it's abstract. And for some reason my, my green must be thinner and it kind of has gone out a little bit so I may have to kind of try to get that to come back in. Now I'm going to do the sour apple and I'm, I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm just going to do this and uh, that way it allows me to kind of just get in the flow and not have to try to explain stuff. You can just kind of watch me. 
one other thing I did want to mention before I forgot about it is I'm in a group, I'm in a couple of groups, I'm in a mentoring group on Facebook for Christian Creatives and I'm also in a new group that has almost 5,000 members in it called Thriving Christian Artists and it has a 30-day challenge, art challenge coming up which starts tomorrow. So my next 30 days of art may be a little bit on the more unusual side. It may not all be fluid, I'm not sure yet. But um, so I just wanted to let you know in case the next 30 days something unique pops up that I typically don't do, then you'll kind of be aware of what's going on. Maybe you want to check it out. If you're a Christian and you want to be a part of a group that's very supportive and like a community of people, like-minded people, then check it out. It's Thriving Christian Artists. It's free. I'm in a mentoring group called Created to Thrive. That one is not free. It costs $37 a month and it's well worth every penny of it to me. But um, the 30-day the challenge is in Thriving Christian Artists. That one is free, and there's about 5,000 members in it right now. It's growing every day. So I'm excited about it. Excited about the art challenge. So I may have to come in and tighten these stems up after after the fact. I don't even remember how I did the tulips. That's the funny part. So... I should have maybe looked at the video before I started this, huh? So these aren't turning out anything like my other painting. Everything is super thickening. That's the weird part. I don't want the splashes that I caused. So maybe this one will not be a companion for the other one, right? Since they don't look anything alike. So you can also take your finger and just remove paint. The good part is the black will almost pretty much fill in on its own, but you can add some back in. So I'm trying to scoop some purple over on this purple ring. So what I had done on the other one was I had the tops were all lighter and I do like all the multicolors in the purple so I'm just trying to decide. I, I think I must still try the effect This is a Deco Art writer bottle that has a needle tip. So there's white Deco Art white paint in here, and I don't even know if I added water or not to it. If I did, it would just have been a drop just to make it a little bit more fluid. I know that I did this on the yellow parts of the tulip on the other painting, so I'm just going to kind of go in and outline the purple. Very little comes out at one time so you have to kind of be patient with it. So 
So I like some things going on in the painting and a lot of things I don't like about it. So right here I'm just going to try to get the purple and the white to go together a little bit better. But it's also, <clears throat> I think what my problem is is my black is super fluid, maybe. And so it's making my colors bleed out a little around all the edges and spread out more. <clears throat> so this has a totally different effect than the other one has altogether. And I'm not digging this one like I did the other one. So now I'm just going down the sides of the stems and trying to thin them out a little bit. I'm out in the country. I don't know if you can hear the frogs. It's rained a lot the last few days. And that always brings out the frogs in the country. I'm wiping every time I run my finger through so that I don't stick any more color on the canvas than already is there. That frog is so loud, I don't know if y'all can hear that. Okay, so now I'm just going to go back and add a little black back in. So I'm going to keep working on the flowers just a little bit, just trying to build up some more color because the purple is kind of too hard and I just want to, I don't know, do something with it. I'm not sure what. I definitely want the deep purple at the bottom. And I'm going to be quiet and you can just watch. So I like it a little better. It's okay. Um, the flowers are, like I said, more fluid. I'm having a hard time containing them. So maybe I just put too much paint on in general, but I like the colors a little bit better the way they've blended. And um, I still want, still want a little bit more brightness down here in the center part. Let me see if I can come up with just a little bit more bright feeling. And I know I've got way too much paint on this canvas. I know that. I know my head gets in the way too. Okay, so I need some 
I need some leaves. Mm, I don't even, I didn't even use the bright blue. That did not work. So I'm going to just go over it again. Found my credit card, which I can use the long part of the credit card. That wasn't really what I wanted either, but I'll live with that because I'm going to have another one coming this way. So make sure to wipe off whatever you're scraping with. And I think I might have some desert turquoise in there, so I'm going to use desert turquoise to... So that turned out a little better. You can always kind of put a little bit of a white edge if you need to. Um, so I want a couple of leaves coming this way. I'll go with the turquoise after the teal this time. Actually, take some of that yellow off. Now that I look at the other one, I don't even think I used yellow in the leaves. Maybe that is also a difference. And I have a lot of yellow in the stems, which you can run your skewer or your credit card through and kind of intermingle those colors so like the yellow is not quite so evident. I can also come back over this. But you're basically just intermingling those colors a little bit on the stems. I'm going to go back to this scraper. I've got a metal scraper that's not as wide as my plastic, but it's wider than the, uh, the smaller one. So I'm going to try to use this very, very lightly. So that worked okay. I just got a gap there, which I need to fill in. So we'll see if that sells up a little bit. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the thing. It's, it's an abstract kind of feel. So you don't have to worry about um, per perfection. So this one I'm going to just kind of do a longer, thinner swipe like that. Then I want one to come across here, and I've got a lot of paint here, so I don't need a whole lot, but I want one that looks like it's kind of folded down this way. So I'm going to do it very lightly. And you can twist it to make it look like it's turning, like the leaf is turning. Some pretty colors on there though. And I took off a little black paint that I scraped off so I'm just kind of replenishing the black there. Then I want one more good one here if I can get it. I think with this one I'm going to start with the light side on the inside and kind of layer it out 
in a darker fashion. So I'm kind of going the opposite of what I had done on those colors. Just in a little bit different just to see what kind of effect it will bring. So I like it, but I didn't get it all the way swiped, so I'm trying to do it again. And if you if you have lines, you can kind of take your skewer and shift your paint a little bit very softly or add some color very softly. But I like that little bit of white that's there in the center. It just makes it look a little different from the other leaves, like it's a highlight. And I could even do something similar here. I'm going to take my smaller palette knife here that's just like a little oval shape, if you can see it. Just very gently swiping over what's already there. And that just gives it a little bit of a edge or highlight. So like here, I want to totally get that paint out of the way and scoot the black over. that leaf edge. And I'm still trying to take off some of this paint for the stalk. And you can use a palette knife or your finger or whatever. Just try to, you know, move the paint back. Because there's plenty of paint on here already. I got a lot here in the middle. Especially right there. So I'm just trying to remove a little with my finger. I have a lot of extra paint right here and I'm just going to swipe it up because I got that one a little bit thin and that's, I mean, you just, you're kind of just intermingling your greens. So these, these tulips really expanded and I didn't mean for them to all to be in a line either. I should have had, like the others were kind of, so in comparison I want to show you I still like it overall. I still like this. I do want to add something to give this leaf a little bit more of an edge. So all you do is just, you know, stick a little paint on there. Maybe I'll do the turquoise and skip the green, festive green. Maybe just a little bit of yellow at the end. You don't even have to do it the whole way. So I'm taking my palette knife. Just very gently dragging it over. So you really didn't know that that wasn't already that way to begin with. And then I like to do, just feels a little bit more abstract. A few lines that just come out kind of in random spots. Maybe I want to broaden this leaf a little bit right here so it doesn't look as much like a stalk. So I'm just going to take my palette knife and I just gently moved it along the edge kind of parallel with the canvas. 
I never really use the heat gun on swipes like this, but i um, just trying to get the leaf to sell up along here. And just trying to give this black a straighter edge here. But anyway, that makes that look more like a leaf and not like a stem because I didn't want it to be mistaken for a stem. You can also take your skewer and kind of scoot things over if you need to. Straighten up some edges. So I'm just bringing the black over to it a little bit. So I'm not super crazy about the tulips. The paint is definitely drying on the background very quickly. I've got a pretty good coat on it though. Okay, I'm gonna stop fiddling with it. I hope you like it. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. There are links below the video. If you hit if you click on show more on your desktop or laptop or if you click on the down arrow on your mobile device there is a Facebook group page that I am part of that is a great way to connect with me. There is an Instagram page of mine that you can click on and follow me on Instagram. I would love you to come over to Instagram and follow me there and there is a PayPal link below the video if you'd like to give anything towards the supplies and paints and things. Also, if you want to do a paid membership, it's $4.99 a month and you'll have more of a personal access to me, maybe some free downloads and little insider videos and things like that, some little special things. So for $5 a month, and that will help me with my supplies and to keep these paintings coming to you. So tomorrow I start my 30-day art challenge, and it's going to be different. I'm going to be doing some different kinds of projects, and I'm going to share with you what the project is. And it is a Christian group. It's, Christian, it's thriving Christian artists. And... If you're not a Christian, I'm not trying to be offensive, but I'm going to be just participating in this 30-day challenge. You can totally look at it from a non-Christian perspective if you want to. So, um, I hope you liked it, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks a bunch.